Hi guys, in the last video, we used a while loop to create a sort of a program which goes on asking us for user age until the user inputs a trigger, in this case minus one, to exit that while loop. Now in this, in this video, we're going to be using the for loop for exactly the same purpose. Now what's the, how does the for loop, what, or put it this way, what's the general form of the for loop? Well, it goes like this. Four, and then you'd have the initial condition, then you'd have the end condition, and then you'd have the increment, and then you'd have the increment, and then you'd have the block as before. And all right, okay. So now, if I if I'm gonna do a general uh, let's do a, th that same example in form of a, a for loop. So for would be like this, for int i is equal to zero. I defined my int in here. And then I use a comma, uh, semicolon, and then my, uh, my, my end condition would be i smaller than 10. That's my end condition. And now my incrementer would be i is equal to i plus 1. So basically, if you look at the difference, the only difference is that this part gets put at, at the top. The condition is the same. And the initiation, which we done outside of the while loop, is done here. Everything, all, all of it is done in here in the for loop. The rest of the block is the same. I can just basically copy that. And it does the same uh, thing as before. Uh, let me uncomment that. Let me uncomment all that. And that is uh, my uh, for loop. And I don't need that. I save that. Okay, and save. And what I can do, I can just comment this stuff out. And we got it. Right, save it. So that's a simple for loop. Now, certain things I have to say. Um, this incrementation is very valid and it's true, but there's a shorter way of doing it. And i is equal to i plus 1 can be shortened to i plus plus. And there's a difference between i plus plus and plus plus i. Okay? Both add i, but some before the fact and some after the fact. I'm going to explain that in another video. Just let's let's just remember that um, incrementing i is done by i and then plus plus. That's why just just a side note. That's why C plus plus is is called this way because it's what is meant by it is sort of an increment of C. You have C plus plus, which means it is C and then C plus one. So C is equal to C plus 1. That's C plus plus. That's a sort of a side note. Uh, that's, how, how, that's how the name or basically what the name C plus plus signifies. Right. So now if you run that program, we can go to output and run that program. That's our old while loop. And I'm going to just say here, um, I'm going to say uh, here, you've exited. You exited the for loop and save it. Right, so save it and now let's run it. I'm not going to delete that output. I'm just going to run this one. And uh, have I got an error somewhere? Oh, uh, yeah, here, print. Okay, save and let's run it. And we should be getting the same output as before as with the while loop. You see, that's the same thing. I have the incrementation values i0, 1, 2, 3, till 9, and then it exits. So basically, exactly the same stuff that we did with the while loop. They're identical. Now, what's the difference between them? Well, here's the difference. In the while loop, in the while loop, the condition in the in, in the sorry, in the for loop, you would have to know your end condition. Whereas in the while loop, you only have to know 
you know the end condition, but there's another way of getting to it. Um, let me put it to you this way. If you look at our application here, it is worked perfectly with a while loop. Now, if I try to do a for loop for our application, you'll see the for loop is not that great. I'll tell you why. Let me just take that, uh, comment it, and cut it, and paste it in here. So we have the general form in front of us all the time. And then let me uh, let me just uncomment that. And right now, let's change from while to for. So for for and now user age is already defined. So I can leave that empty and the condition is, or the end condition is user age greater than zero. Now, what's my increment? That's my problem here. How do I increment? And you know, um, whatever I increment doesn't play a role because user age is independent of what I increment. I could have something like um, an int i here. And I can here increment i. But this i has absolutely no role uh, on this one. And here, I don't have an initializer because the user age is getting its value from the user. So here, this would be one way of doing the for loop. And as you can see, it is you know, I have to use a crutch here with the int i. So this is something where you'd see, you know, the for loop is great if you know, uh, you know, I've got, I've got so many iterations to do. If you have, for instance, I don't know, you'd have a list, a long list of 100 elements and you need to loop through these, then for loop is, is great because you know exactly, oh, I've got to go through those 100 or if you have a classroom of 25 people and you need to get their names, then loop is great because you know, I've got 25 people, I start with, with one and I go uh, iterate one by one. Here, in our case here, a for loop is not that great. Why? Because I don't know, I don't know how, many, how often we should loop. The user decides that on the fly. So here, the for loop had, had to be modified in order to cater for that situation. And here it is obvious that is not as great, not as suitable as a while loop. A while loop looked much better. Anyways, both work. It's just, you know, here four is a bad pick. So let's try it out anyways. And uh, again, I gotta go to the terminal and I'm gonna save that. And let me just check if everything is right. Okay, now let's go. Let's GCC minus O ABC and then components.c. And I'm compiling. Right, now now call ABC. ABC.exit. And we get started. Okay. Uh, please input your age. So I'm saying 23. So it says you're an adult with 23 years. What well, input your age? Uh, 11. Uh, you're still a minor. Zero. And now here, uh, I think we're going to exit. We are going to exit because the condition is greater or equal zero. I should have put it um, greater zero. Uh, or uh, no, we still no, no. Sorry. It, yeah, that's true. Uh, please input your age. In exit. Now, if I put minus one, then we exited. Yeah. So you see here, it is the same thing as a while loop. I just got a logical error for, uh, before thinking it'll exit with zero. It doesn't because user age has to be greater or equal to zero. So anything which does not, which is untrue, where this is rendered untrue, uh, will, make, will make us exit the for loop. So and zero is with zero, this is still true. And once this is no more true, then, um, then the, the for loop will exit. It's the same thing here. Uh, the for loop will go on until this is no more true. And if this is not true anymore, i.e. 
10. If you once you reach 10, then this is not true anymore. It's not more smaller than 10, and that's why the loop will exit. And the same thing here. But what I wanted to show here, that's the way the for loop works. But what I wanted to show here is that in this case, you see that the for loop is not a very suitable loop for our application in this case. There will be often be other cases where obviously a for loop is much more advantageous, much more suitable than a while loop, but not in this case.